Do you need to do some trim work, some finish work, uh, or just make some cool jigs? You may want to check out the clean drive system from Rigid. We'll be right back. I'm Tim Johnson. You're watching Shop Tool Reviews. This is the Rigid R09891, and it is their brushless 18 gauge clean drive brad nailer. Now, what's the clean drive system? Well, supposedly it's supposed to enable you to use a cordless nailer and be able to deliver the same type of strike each and every time, regardless of whether you're straight up and down, whether you're a little crooked, maybe you're shooting in some trim, things like that. You can't always be perpendicular to your surface. Anyway, that's the idea is to basically prevent missed strikes or prevent those problems where you have the head sticking up, nails bent over, that sort of thing. We're gonna try it out. We're gonna dig into the features as normal, take a little closer look at each of the features here and see what's different about the clean drive system, about the rigid uh, cordless nailer, and to see is it going to measure up to the pneumatic nailers that we're used to and that we like because they're usually lighter and smaller. However, they're getting a lot closer with this nail gun. So let's check it out. Then we'll come back and talk about pricing, talk about warranty and what we think of it. This is the Rigid R09891 or their 18 gauge Brad nailer. Uh, this is a brushless unit. It has their clean drive technology, which we'll dive into here in just one moment. Uh, I've got the two amp hour battery in here, but you can buy this as a bare tool or you can buy it with the two amp hour kit and a charger with it. Now, one thing that's really cool on these new Brad nailers from Rigid is the ability back here to kind of throttle this tool. So you have your depth adjustment uh, up on the front on the snout, if you will, but you also have this control, which is almost like a throttle control or think of it as air pressure control as you would on a pneumatic nailer. That's what this is going to do. So to the left is less and to the right is more. And we'll show that here in one moment as well. And by the way, if you're hearing some, uh, some noise in the background, we do have a bad storm that's raining on us right now. So you may hear that hitting on the roof as we speak. Pretty simple uh, trigger style here, like any other Brad nailer. Uh, but one thing that Rigid has is they have a little button right here that will turn on the light without having to pull the trigger. Now, yes, the trigger will do the same thing, but if you're in an area before you strike it, you actually want a little light cast on it. You can just pull that trigger with your hand and that's going to illuminate the, uh, the area that you're working on. There's another little switch down here and that's going to control your single fire and your rapid fire mode or your bump mode. So you can set it to where you can hold the trigger and just in bump mode, depress that, uh, that safety lock on the front, on the snout, and it will actually shoot. The nails will again show that in one moment as well. Now, the, another cool feature on this is the ability to see what size nails you have in it. Now, when I first saw that, I thought, well, that's kind of gimmicky. You know what size nails you're shooting, but that never fails that when you're using a brad nail or you're shooting, shooting it or you're running some, uh, uh, some trim in or something like that, maybe you're shooting some cabinets and then you go, oh, wait a second, I need to go to a longer nail. What do I have in there? And I can quickly look and know that, well, I'm little short of a two and an eight, so I must have a two inch brad nail in there or it may be down here and see that it's a one inch. So it is pretty cool that they have those sizes there that you can quickly, just by a glance of an eye, see what size brads you already have in there. We also have the, the spring load in here, which actually you know keeps pressure on those brads as well as the, uh, the orange uh, here actually lets you know when you're getting close to the end. So when this orange comes down here, which I'll show you here in a moment, and there's no more nails left, now you see the orange is showing here in the window, and you know it's time to replace those nails. So when you get four or five shot, uh, shots from the end, you can quickly see that it's time to, uh, to add some brads. And this is going to shoot everything from 5 eighths all the way up uh, to 2 and an eighth inch straight. 18 gauge brad nails. Now, if you do have a hiccup or you get a bent nail or something happens, and that's always gonna happen when it comes to a brad nailer, no tools are needed to clean this out. So obviously without a battery in it, without nails in it, you can flip this up here and be able to pull this out of the way and get to all your mechanisms there to clear out whatever problems you may have I need to listen to myself and remove my battery. So now you can easily get to everything in there 
and be able to clean out a bent nail, bent brad, uh, whatever you got going on in there. Quickly flip this back down, hook the lever right there on the hooks, pull that down. So no Allen heads, uh, no screws, anything else that you have to worry about. So I'm going to throw these two inch nails back in here, these two inch brads. And we'll put our battery on. And by the way, one two amp hour battery is supposed to shoot like over a thousand nails. So it's really going to last you a long time, even on this small two amp hour battery. Now let's get an idea on the weight. So with the two amp hour battery, there we go with the two amp hour battery, six pounds, seven and a half ounces. So uh, six and a half pounds for the tool and the battery. Not too bad. And size wise on this, as far as height goes with the tip, you're looking at right at 11 inches. And then as far as length with the two amp hour battery, about 11 inches as well. So about 11 inches either way should, should be able to get into most tight places. So it's a little bit more cumbersome or a little bit bigger than a, than a pneumatic, but they've really slimmed them down to where you can still get these in, in tighter spaces, even with the cordless tool. Okay, so we're gonna test the rigid clean drive 18 gauge nailer. Um, and we're going to test it with several different nails. We got some one and a quarter inch brad nails. We've got some five eighths inch, which is the smallest this will accept. And we've got some two inch. It will go up to two and an eight, but we're going to shoot some two inch. Uh, so we're going to start right in the middle with uh, probably something pretty typical you would keep in this gun. And that's inch and a quarter, inch and a half, uh, 18 gauge brad nails. Um, we also have some different wood. We've got everything from pine, which is pretty soft. You find all over the southeast and all the box stores. Um, we've got some MDF uh, molding as well as some PVC or some type of composite molding. And uh, then we have some cedar, we have some oak, some poplar, some white ash, and some more pine. So we're going to try some different woods to just see how clean of a drive uh, this can actually make as well as see how true it will remain. Um, and we're going to try out the uh, the, the throttle mechanism is what I'm calling it. It's supposed to act uh, like uh, the air pressure would act on a pneumatic nailer because we still have our depth adjustment here on the tip. So we'll, we'll set that. And then we'll also set this. It, it should kind of adjust the power, if you will, to this gun also. Okay, first we're gonna remove the battery and then we'll open the slide. And let's put in our inch and a quarter nails. And we can, we can see that inch and a quarter right there. It's right there lining up on our one and a quarter inch mark. So easy to see that. And put our battery in. And we've got it on single fire mode. And we'll try rapid fire here in a moment or bump fire, rapid fire, whatever you want to call that. So we've got our inch and a quarter in. Let's start with some regular old pine. Again, this is something that we would find in our Home Depots and Lowe's and uh, whatever other you know, big box stores or lumber yards we would have here in the Southeast. Just a very general building material, two by fours, uh, moldings, uh, everything you can find here in pine just about. And so we're gonna shoot this and just see where we're at. Let me, I think, let, let me back this up a little bit. By the way, on the depth adjustment here, uh, not only can I move this easy, even though it is kind of a plastic cup, it is a plastic cup. Uh, we have detents there that easily clicks into place. So you can kind of feel those detents as you're moving this. So now I'm bottomed out. Let's go somewhere in the middle here. And then we'll shoot this one and a quarter inch. Okay, so that shot at below deck. Let me raise that up a little bit. Okay, so now we're, wow, we're right there, just sunk uh, below the, the top of that wood there, right below the surface, which is pretty perfect. That's staying pretty true. Now let's, let's do this. Let's back off the throttle some. In fact, I'm going to go all the way back and off and then see what we get. You may not be able to tell, but it definitely uh, surfaced up a little bit. So these are sunk just barely below the surface. And these are almost out there. Actually, they feel a little proud of the surface. So you can actually feel the heads on this. So moving that did kind of uh, fine tune, if you will, that power that's driving those nails. Now let me go all the way the other way and uh, see how much difference we make.
Yeah, so again, we get about the same amount that we drove it uh, that much further down than we did raise it up. So that's actually working pretty well, and that's a nice fine-tune adjustment uh, aside from the actual depth adjustment on the no nose of the gun. So I really like that. That's, that's pretty nice there. So you could, uh, if you're doing cabinet work, something, you know, you're really needing to fine-tune that and doing some, uh, you know, some finer moldings, if you will, that's going to work great for doing that. Now let's try bump mode here. So I'm going to hold my trigger down. Now to me, this is different than a nail gun. Uh, you know, if I were using a framing gun, then that bump fire, I want it to shoot hard every time. So I don't see you using this gun and literally shooting, you know, three a second, if you will. But you see the ones I shot, they stayed very uniform. So there's one right here that's a little bit proud, sticking up just a little bit, but that might've been from my, from my previous shot. But regardless, the rest of these are sunk about the same exact amount, even using uh, the bump fire method. Now that one did leave the first two a little high and then the rest of them stayed about the same. Doesn't look like I was, well, yeah, I could have been getting into that knot, maybe. But regardless, I'm still staying pretty consistent there on those shots. Now let's take some of this MDF crown molding and uh, let's shoot some, some of the same inch and a quarter nails. But what I need to do now, I need to be able to get this because I, I don't have a large surface area there where I need to shoot through. So I need to not only shoot at an angle, but I need to make sure that I can see where I'm driving and that it's actually going to drive those correctly. So that's where they say this clean drive really comes into effect is even though I'm shooting at an angle, we're still leaving uh, the same amount of depth here. It's not changing that just because I'm shooting at an angle and, and getting that uh, kind of off center or off of perpendicular is, is a better term, I guess. Um, these, these are still staying uniform and driving uh, correctly. The other thing I really like is, is this tip, I can easily see where I'm shooting. A lot of times these tips on these guns are kind of tough to see where you're shooting. You know, you can't see around the, the actual mechanism of the gun, but this one I can, I can easily see that and be able to drive that fastener. So I drove that very well. Okay, so let's grab something different here. In fact, let's go to a 5 8 inch. So now we've got a 5 8 inch brad in there. Sure, I probably need to come up a little bit. In fact, I came all the way to the top. And I'm going to shoot this, uh, this small piece of cedar into this cedar. So pretty, pretty much a soft wood as well. Um, and let's see how this acts. So driving that pretty deep, shoot another one here, and I'm going to go back to my single fire mode, and I'm going to back off here because I backed off all of my depth adjustments, so I'm shooting 5 8 into this, what's that, probably a piece of quarter inch thick cedar shooting into cedar. So now I'm back all the way off. So in the 5 8 brad nails, with it backed all the way off on what I call the throttle, if you will, as well as on the depth adjustment, I'm still leaving it below the surface. So if you're going to that smallest nail and you're shooting in the soft wood and you're wanting to leave it at the surface, it's probably not going to do that. But at the same time, I'm not driving this too deep. You're going to have to come back with some wood putty anyway to cover those marks and that's going to be just fine. I'm not leaving a blade mark really. You know, a lot of times you'll see where the, uh, where the blade actually comes out and you see that huge blade mark outside of the, the, uh, the circumference of the brad itself. And that's not the case with this. It's shooting that very well.
Now let's shoot into some hardwood. So now we've got the same 5 8 inch uh, staples or 5 8 inch brads and I've got a piece of pine shooting into a piece of oak. So a lot harder wood on the bottom. So that one's leaving it right at the surface. In fact, I'm going to turn that up a little bit. Yeah, that's, that's doing that really nice and it's not leaving it high even though I'm shooting into some hard wood here. I'm going to take some of my cheap uh, whatever this stuff is. It's not PVC. It's that uh, foam composite molding, whatever that is. And again, I've got the 5 8 nails in here. So again, even though this is a pretty soft material that you can drive about anything through, it's doing a great job, but it is putting them below the surface, but not too far. Easily come back and uh, cover those holes with out much damage done to that whatsoever. Now I'm going to pull these nails out and we're going to go back to our one and a quarter inch and shoot some hardwood into some hardwood. So I've got a piece of poplar. I'm going to shoot into that oak and we'll see how well that handles it. And so I know I have not added to uh, since I was shooting the small 5 8 snail. So I know it's going to leave these heads high. I just want to see how, how high it's going to leave them. Oh, really not. So it's probably leaving those a little too high than for my liking because I want to come back and clean those up so I can Add a little power. And there we go. So now we're starting to drive them below deck, if you will, or below the surface. And I may even go one click on my depth adjustment. Yeah, that's leaving those quite nice. Maybe another couple of clicks there. Yeah, so there we go. So really driving those well, and that's through two pieces of hardwood. We'll flip it over and shoot through the oak. Still shooting very well and driving those below uh, the surface of the wood. And by the way, if we really wanted to drive those, can turn that up and really drive those below the surface if we needed to. And now let's uh, load this up with some two inch and we'll put it all the way down, crank it all the way up. Take these two pine two by fours. So first one blew out the side here and the other ones drove straight through. And I'll go back to bump fire. honest and say that typically when we're doing finish work or building jigs things like that shooting these small brads it's really nice to have a pneumatic nailer because they're typically lighter and smaller now this rigid uh, brushless clean drive nailer is getting a lot closer no it's not quite as light no it's not quite as small 
However, it is very handy. You don't have a, an air hose you have to worry about. You don't have to worry about a compressor. So I think they've hit this pretty nice right here in the middle to be able to still make it handy enough to carry around and not get mad at it. Uh, but also be able to eliminate that air hose, eliminate that compressor need. And now with one battery, you're driving over a thousand strikes, even with a two amp hour battery. So we were very impressed with it, regardless of whether we were shooting, you know, softwoods like pine uh, and the cedar, as well as even shooting through poplar, oak, and even white ash. Uh, driving these uh, trim moldings, whether it be crown molding, whether it be a, you know, a corner bead, whatever, it did very well at all those. Did it have a couple of missed strikes? Yes, but you know, part of that was just dialing it in. Uh, for the most part, it stayed very consistent on driving those nails, something that typically in a cordless nailer we don't see a lot of. So very happy with this. Price on this, so this is the R09891, and it's their clean drive uh, brushless brad nailer rigid had an older brushless 18 gauge brad nailer as well so don't get this confused with that this new one is 199 dollars as a bare tool so without the battery 199 dollars now i did see you can get it with a charger and with a two amp hour battery which should be sufficient for you for 269 so that's not bad for 70 bucks stepping up to the battery and the charger now here's the kicker on that if you buy the kit the LSA or the lifetime service agreement goes with the tool, the battery and the charger. So you're covered for a lifetime as long as you register your tool. So make sure you register your tool if you buy those rigid tools to get that lifetime service agreement. We're very happy with this. You check it out for yourself. If you don't mind, would you keep track of us on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter? Also, if you don't mind, would you hit that like and subscribe button? But only if you liked our video, if you didn't like our video, by all means, give us a thumbs down. But would you let us know in the comments why? Have a great day and keep smiling.